West Coast Classics, baby. Brought to you on the 15 quickest minutes of sports. Al York Sports. Let's get it, baby. Y'all know I love my classics, man. But uh, I'm here to present to you another 15 minutes. Al York Sports, the raw truth. Nothing but the raw truth to help you guard. Y'all already know what the fuck it is, nigga. You know what I mean? My ninjas. Let me let me say my ninjas. Yeah, I don't want to have no issues with the N-word, so I'm going to say my ninjas. Shout out to the East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, Las Vegas, New York City, LES to the death. You know I got to call that. Triple H, everything. Dwayne Beeman. Look out for the Dwayne Beeman fight August 14th. You know what I mean? You know he going to scrap it up, man. He going to scrap it up. Another TV turned off. Next. We going to go next. Credit fix. Never too late to get your credit fix. IG me, inbox me, email me, al.newyork at yahoo.com. Never too late to get your credit fix. Uh, you, you need advertisement, hit me up, split screen. I'll shout you out or I'll package my whole shit, go to your lab and do the whole breakdown. You know what I mean? Whatever y'all want, I'm here to give it to y'all, man. And last but not least, open sessions and giveaways. We continue to get new people. I want to thank y'all for giving me the opportunity to y'all to get on board and have some fun with this every Friday on open sessions and giveaways. Let's start the show. We're going to go right on the ice with the Tampa Bay Lightning are hosting the Montreal Canadiens uh, for the Stanley Cup Finals. The lines, were, from my understanding, I think was like minus 260 for the Lightning, plus 200 for the Canadiens for the series. And the last I checked was third period, 3-1 Lightning. And it looks like another lightning, you know, you know, chip. That's what it looked like. You know, the Canadians are the hottest team right now. You know what I mean? I mean, when you got a 36-17-3 and three record by the lightning and a 24-21-11 and 11 for the Canadians, you would think it's an easy series for the lightning. But it ain't going to be easy. Canadians are playing the best hockey right now, and they will make them earn the Stanley Cup if they do win the Stanley Cup. And like I said, right now, it was 3-1 in the third period unless there's some more scoring. We're going to go to the hall with the NBA game five tonight. The last I looked, uh, the Suns were trailing by 9-72, something like 71-62. Uh, knows a different score now. Game five, Suns looking for the closeout. And I'm going to hit y'all up at the end of the show about the Phoenix Suns uh, season. So I need y'all to make sure y'all stay on because I got some important stuff to put out. But the Suns are trying to close it out right now at the Valley in a tough game five. Clippers are not going to go down easy. Kawhi Leonard or no Kawhi Leonard. Let's stay on the hardwood. Dallas Mavericks reached an agreement with uh, all-star, ex-all-star guard Jason Kidd and Hall of Famer who's the new head coach. Uh, Nico Harrison is the new GM from Nike. Uh, the higher kid hoping that he could bring a better understanding to Luka Doncic and the whole Maverick team. From my understanding, Paul Zinkis and Doncic are not getting along. That's probably the first thing kids has to fix or send off Paul Zinkis and uh, maybe get a second round pick for him or whatever you can get for him. Because if they're not getting along, you got to favor Doncic because Doncic is the star of the team. Great pickup. Rick Carlisle was getting a load of old school for these young cats. Now you bring in a uh, young guy like Kid, who who's in his 40s, you know what I mean, who could maybe relate a lot better. Not maybe, will relate a lot better than Carlisle, but he's not a better coach from the X's and O's than Carlisle. So that's going to be a give and take uh, hire right there for Mark Cuban. You're going to have some good, and then you're going to have some bad with it. But overall, another great pickup for Mark Cuban. Other news, the Portland Trailblazers went and uh, read up and got Chauncey Billups, Chauncey, a.k.a. Big Shot Billups, to run the Portland Trailblazers. This is one of the things that uh, Damian Lillard want. Uh, you know, he wanted to make sure that they get a younger coach, somebody more relatable. Uh, but but I, but I keep saying, though, y'all, like, Okay, they got the coach. He wants players. Now, they had a bunch of scorers last year, but zero defense. So you're going to have to get him some a defensive guy who also can score. For Lillard could be happy because at the right now, Billups is not enough for him to be happy. A lot of y'all saying, oh, they're not going to trade him. They're not going to trade him. 
You don't want to keep an unhappy camp. But look what's happening in Green Bay in football with Aaron Rodgers, where he ain't even showing up to mandatory practice. You do not want that. That becomes a cancer in your locker room. That creates separation in your locker room. You do not want that as a professional organization. So either Damon Lillard gets happy, maybe if they make a trade or something, but if he's still unhappy, you're going to have to package him off and get the most that you can for D. Lillard, a.k.a. D. Dollars. Other news. Four-time Pro Bowler, 33-year-old Demarius Thomas has called it quits in the NFL after having a 10-year career. Damn, I remember this kid coming out of Georgia Tech. It was just like yesterday. Uh, the NFL career is a little window. I mean, 10 years ain't that bad. At least he didn't do five, six years like a lot of running backs do. But it's just, it's ironic. That's why these NFL players got to get paid immediately. They putting their bodies out there, and their bodies are definitely going to be affected after their football career. So it's good to lock up some good money so that, you know, you have more privileges after you retire. That's why I don't knock nobody. The Maris Thomas got his, you know what I mean, his chicken. Uh, he made sure he got his chicken. He played good, got one Super Bowl, four All-Pro, four-time All-Pro, where, you know, he made the Pro Bowl four times. Real good receiver for Peyton Manning, 724 receptions, 10,000 yards, 13.5 average, 63 touchdowns for Demarius Thomas. Salute, bro. Other news. Got to go to the diamond. I got to mention this. Best pitcher in baseball. I had him and Garrett Cole, one and two. Didn't matter which way. Now it matters. He's the best pitcher in baseball. It's incredible how Jacob DeGrom continues his onslaught for the New York Mets. Uh, 31 straight scoreless innings. It was 30. Then he gave up a run the other day in the second inning on a single by Maytong with two outs. Uh, that's the only way he gave up a run. Uh, 13 straight games where he's not where he's given up one run or less. One run or less in 13 straight games. It's hard to do that in three straight games. 13 straight games. Like I said, 31 scoreless innings. And this is the most incredible stat right here. 12 straight game where he has retired the first three hitters in the game. One, two, three. Now, I'm not saying shut out the first inning. I'm not saying where, you know, they get a walk, a hit, and he gets out the inning. No, no, no. Three up, three down. So if you put like a no run in the first inning, you already know you got half of it already with the Grom. Now, you got to depend on that other pitcher. But unfortunately, I was doing the homework on that. The other pitchers have been giving up a run in the first. So if you've been betting DeGrom, no runs in the first, laying out that minus 160, 180, you're probably losing money because the fact that the other pitcher's been giving up a run every other game and it's more than even money for the, you know, for the no runs, that's why you're losing money. But like I said, Jacob DeGrom's incredible. Uh, he's got a career record of 77 and 53, 2.49 earn run average in 2021 and 72 innings pitch. Matter of fact, he's got more than that. Now, he's got about 77 innings pitch. He's 7 and 2 with a 0 0.50 earn run average. It might be 0 0.58 now with that last game. I didn't I didn't encounter those numbers into this. But either way, 0. Point, whatever it is, 6 0, 7 0. 7 and 2, another Cy Young Award winner, it looks like. Might even win the MVP because he's even hitting for a nice batting average. Jacob DeGrom is the best pitcher in the MLB. I'm calling it right now. Let's go to all the news. Okay. A lot of people going to hear me on this. And I want y'all to critique me too, especially the, uh, Sergio, who's a Phoenix Sun fan. But I got to put this out there. And Serge, you ever want to get on my show, hit me in my inbox. I'll bring you right in, half screen. We know we could talk like man. We could say your opinion. Because me and you always, for some reason, disagree, which is beautiful. Like, I don't want you to think I don't like you because we don't disagree. You know, you be saying a lot of slick shit. That's why I'm always inviting you on. But I ain't got dog. I love it. I love it that you go different. 
And I wish you were to come on because I need a dude to go different. I don't need everybody to be a yes man. I don't want no yes man in my show. If anything, I want that dude to disagree so we can hammer it out. Let's hammer it out. Real talk. Let's hammer it out. But let me get this off. Phoenix Suns, great season. Great season. 51 and 21. Last year, they ended the bubble like 8 and 0, 9 and 0. Didn't make the playoff. They kind of got suckered because how do you go undefeated? How do you get nominated to go to the bubble and then you don't even make the playoffs? You dig what I'm saying? So that was kind of fucked up. But this year, they acquired Chris Paul. Monty Williams is coaching his, uh, his best ever. I mean, thanks to Chris Paul also, but Monty Williams also becoming a better coach because of Paul and because of having another year in the league. So that was a great combination with the young boy Aiden and, of course, Devin Booker. Now, they went 51-21, to great season. Now, this is where I'm going to say they got a little lucky, and I promise you I'm not hating. It is what it is. I'm going I'm to break it down to y'all. Lakers was favored 300 against Phoenix in the playoff, which meant 300 to win 100, 3 to 1. They beat the Lakers mainly because AD was hurt and LeBron was nursing an injury. I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it real. I had the Lakers beating them, but in my head, I wanted Phoenix to win. I'm not a Laker fan. Y'all know I don't feel LeBron like that. I don't feel LeBron like that. But what your mind think in your heart, if you're a gambling man, you can't bet with your heart. Y'all know that. That's why I like the Lakers. I thought the Lakers were the better team, and they would have beat them if everybody was up there. You see what they did to them game two and game three. They beat them easily. But once AD got injured, LeBron kept nursing that injury, there was no way they could keep up with this young team. Salute to the Suns. Came back from 2-1. Came back, beat them. AD hurt or not, they still had to beat them, and they did. So I'm still going to give them their respect, but they got a break. Series number two, Denver Nuggets. Wiped them out 4 nothing. Now, I'm going to say there's no Jamal Murray. But I'm going to tell you right now, the way Suns looked in that series, Jamal Murray or no Jamal Murray, they would have beat him. If not, wouldn't have been no 4 nothing. It would have probably been the 6th, 7th game. Because Murray is Denver Nuggets' first or second best player on that team. Either behind Jokic or right with Jokic. Murray is a beast at point guard. He can shoot, drive. He can break the defenses. He's a whole new animal. He would have changed that whole series. But I'm going to still say... Suns would have won that series because they were sharp in that series. So, salute to the Suns, but once again, they get another break. Murray didn't play the whole series. You see where I'm going with this, right? It might be their year. The way shit is happening for them, it's like the, the, the NBA guards are trying to get Chris Paul a chip because they're making it as easy as possible, knocking out the best players on the team. It's not a player. Is the best player. AD right now is the best player on the Lakers right now. Not all time. Of course, LeBron got him all time. But right now, AD is the best. Jamal, uh, Jamal Murray is either the best or number two on that team. Just like AD. Very important player. They got lucky they went there. Now you go to the Clippers. No Kawhi Leonard. They were up three games to one. All the games they lost were close. So you tell me if Kawhi was playing in those games, would have, would have been 3-1 Suns. But like I said, it's hard me knowing that if all these guys were there, it would not have been this easy. I would have loved to have seen it like that. But at the same time, you can't knock the Suns. It's not their fault that these guys are injured. So that's why I'm going to praise them and salute them. Hear me clearly, Serge. I'm not knocking your team. I'm a sports analyst. I bring sports to the table. These are stuff I have to mention. If I don't, then I'm not doing my job. You understand me? Great season for the Suns, no matter how you break it down. How you break it down. Now, did I have them personally going? No, no. Because I think if these guys weren't injured, I think one of them would have knocked them out. I'm keeping it funky. But you know what? It didn't happen that way. No AD for half of the series. LeBron hurt. No Murray the whole series. No Claw the whole series. 
They're going to get to the championship. Now, this is this is the crazy shit, though. Once Brooklyn beat the Bucks, and there was two series left, you could either pick Phoenix, Clippers, Bucks, or the Hawks. Now, I picked the Clippers earlier, but with no Kawhi Leonard, I know they're not winning the chip with no Kawhi Leonard. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's obvious. So, when I redirected my pick, which I already lost, there's no excuses, I lost my future with the Nets and the Clippers if they go down today. The there's no excuses. But I say the Bucks will come out. Now, listen to me carefully. If the Bucks and Suns meet up in a chip, a healthy Bucks team, a healthy Bucks team, and the Suns beat them, then I personally don't want to hear nothing about everybody being hurt, how they got through the Western Conference. But if the Bucks smashed them, then you know why they got there. You know why they got there. But like I said, if they beat the Bucks, I'm going to be the first one giving them their props. Because I give props and props to do. I'm giving them props now, though they were, they lucky to get through these series with these key players hurt. they lucky. they lucky. But they still earn their money. But if they beat the Bucks, if the Bucks make it to the chip, nobody get hurt. Middleton don't get hurt. Giannis don't get hurt. And they beat the Bucks. I'm going to be the first one giving CP3 and the Phoenix Suns all the props they fucking deserve. And with that, I want to thank you guys for another 15 minutes. I went over a few minutes. Uh, just continue to tune in on Friday's open sessions and giveaways. You already know I'm going to bring y'all nothing. Nothing but real raw material. Uh, I'm going to make sure we prepare. I'm going to bring y'all some dudes that know they shit. Just continue to tune in. Continue to participate in my giveaway. I want to thank y'all. I love y'all. Al Your Sports, the raw truth. Coming to a theater near you. And like I said, salute, salute to Snoop Dogg. Ain't no fun. Rest in peace, Nate Dogg. Rest, I mean, uh, salute to Corrupt. Love y'all. Hold your heads, man. Al York Sports.